Hi everyone, welcome to this video entitled Digital Control of a Current Mode DC-DC Converter Compensator Direct Synthesis Here we have the outline of this presentation We will see an introduction The model selection The compensator design and verification And finally some QSPICE simulations to verify our design. Here are some relevant videos related to this topic, Power Electronics number 66, Digital Control of a Current Mode DC-DC Back Converter. Here we designed the compensator by using the conventional methodology, Power Electronics number 67 and Power Electronics number 68 about how to discretize continuous systems and particularly DC-DC converters. Here we have the schematic of a digitally controlled DC-DC converter. In previous videos, Power Electronics 67 and 68, we learned how to discretize the continuous part of the system. So we have the discrete transfer function here BGC of Z, which is the discretization of the zero order hole block, the plant, and the hypothetical sampler that we would have here. So it corresponds to all these three blocks here. And on the other hand, we have the transfer function BGC H of Z, which corresponds to the discretization of the block B, the plant GC, the sensor HS, and the sampler. So it corresponds to all this part in the schematic. So from these transfer functions, we can obtain this final transfer function G sub CL of Z, which is the transfer function of the complete system from the reference to the output. So with this we are studying the whole system from the discrete point of view. And today we are going to learn how to do the design of the digital compensator directly using these discrete transfer functions. It is also important to remember that this transfer function BGC of C, which corresponds to these three blocks, is not equal to the transfer function of the zero order hole block times the transfer function of the plant. We have seen this in previous videos and similarly in the case of GGC H is not the same of B times GC times H. For more information please take a look at these two videos related to how to do the discretization. The direct synthesis of the compensator is done by model matching. So if we have here our transfer function in closed loop, the final transfer function, then what we are going to do is to make this transfer function equal to a given model that we are going to define. So this is the model M. And then we know the expression of GCL. So we have to do this equation here from which we can obtain the expression of the compensator. So we finally obtain this equation from which everything is known because we are going to define M and we know the other two transfer functions. So then we can calculate the expression of the compensator. But in order to do a successful design, we need to satisfy three design conditions. The first one is that our compensator C must be causal. This means that it must depend only on previous samples. At the end, this is fulfilled if the degree of the denominator of C is higher than the degree of the numerator of C. So the output of the compensator is going to depend only on previous samples. Otherwise, it couldn't be implemented in a real-time application, as is the case of our DC-DC converter. 
The second condition is that the compensator has to be as simple as possible. So we have to try to obtain an expression that is going to be easily implemented in our computer. And finally, we have to assure stability. This is very important and usually the unstable behavior comes from the fact that we don't have a good pole zero cancellation in the poles and the zeros of the final compensator, especially if these poles and zeros are very close to the boundary of the unit circle, we will have unstable behavior. We will see a little bit about this in next slides. Here is the schematic of the current mode back DCDC converter that we have been using in previous videos. Today we are going to do a simplification, which is to consider negligible value of the series resistance of the output capacitor C. So in this case, we are going to have this transfer function. We have only one pole and no zero. We are going to consider that the gain of the voltage sensor at the output H is equal to one. And also that the gain of the current sensor to measure the current through the inductor is one ohm. And we will select a sampling period of 10 microseconds. In the previous video, Power Electronics number 68, we discretize the transfer function of our converter and we obtain this expression here. In this case, with the simplification of negligible resistance of the output capacitor, we get this expression. We have this value here, it's a constant in the numerator and then we have a pole here on the denominator and because we are selecting h equal to one then we will have that the transfer function bgc h is equal to bgc so again we have here the expression it depends on the load resistor on the resistor of the current sensor on the pole of the transfer function and on the sampling period. To do this kind of analysis and design, it's very convenient to use SymPy library, which is the symbolic mathematics library in Python. You can obtain more information about this library from this link. And in this way, as shown in this code here, using WinPython, we can include all the parameters and do all the maths and obtain, finally, the expression in the Z domain of the final transfer function of our converter. Here we have the model that we have chosen. This is the expression M for the model, so it's a gain K. And then we have a second order polynomial in the denominator. The response that we are going to have is going to be like this here, mark with the red dots for a step transient of one unit. So to characterize this response, we have two parameters. One is the iteration at which we are going to have the peak value of the response and it can be obtained from this expression as a function of the parameters of the model. And then we have the overshoot m sub p, which is expressed with this equation here. And of course, we have the gain of the response, which depends on the value of k. In this case, we are going to select a gain of 1. So at the end, we are going to have the same value here in steady state. So we select a DC gain equal to 1, which can be obtained with this limit here. And from each, we can get the value of the K parameter. And then we are selecting an amplitude of the overshoot of 30% and the overshoot sample equal to 4. With all this information, we can again use WinPython. We can implement here this code with all the different parameters and then with the final expression of M. This is very convenient because if we want to modify anything, then we can just come here and then we will have the new expression for M. 
In this case, this is the expression that we have for m, and these are the poles that we are going to have for our model. It's a second order model with overshoot, so we have a pair of conjugate poles with these values here. Before going on with the design of the compensator, let's do a quick test of our model. So we can simulate this model using QSpice. Here we have the schematic. This is the block in C++ to do the implementation. We have our sampling clock here. The sampling period is 10 microseconds. We are injecting a step at the input with an amplitude equal to 1. And here we have the outputs and also the sampled input and so on, as we have seen in previous videos. Here we have the C++ code. So these are the different variables, the samples that we are going to use. And below we have the implementation of the model. So here we are saving the previous samples. We measure here the input voltage and then we calculate the current sample of the output voltage using the expression that we have just calculated. So now we can compile the DLL and run the simulation. And here we have the results. This is the signal of the clock here. And below we have the input voltage in green and the output voltage in blue. So we can see that the peak value is obtained at the fourth sample and the amplitude that we have here. If we look here at the bottom, we can see that the amplitude is 1.3 volts as expected. So everything is okay and now we can go on with the design of our compensator. To do the design of the compensator, we only have to use this expression, as we have seen in a previous slide, and then we implement this in WinPython. So we can calculate here the expression of the transfer function of the compensator. Then we divide the numerator and the denominator by the coefficient of the maximum exponent in the denominator to do the normalization. So in WinPython we can calculate this coefficient using this expression. So we divide numerator and denominator by this coefficient and then we get here the expression of the numerator and the denominator which is again represented here and then in order to obtain the discrete difference equation we do the corresponding math and finally we obtain this discrete difference equation for our compensator. And now what we are going to do is the verification of the closed loop transfer function. So at the end we know that our transfer function in closed loop is this expression here. So again using WinPython we can do all the calculations. And we can see that we are getting here at the end for the closed loop transfer function is not exactly the model that we have defined. In the numerator we have a polynomial of, of first order and in the denominator we have a polynomial of third order. So we can check the gain and we can see that the gain is equal to 1, so this is okay. And then if we calculate here separately the expressions for the numerator and the denominator and with these functions here roots calculate the roots of the numerator and the denominator, we can see that we have in the final expression a zero and a pole exactly with the same value. So this zero and this pole should be compensating each other in order to have the final expression because as we can see the other two poles are conjugate poles that have the expected value that we have in the model. So this is very critical because if this pole and this zero are very close to the circumference of unit radius, then we can have an unstable operation in the final converter in closed loop. In this case, these values are not so close to the unit value. 
so we can expect that everything is going to be well. So now we are going to do a simulation in QSpice to verify that our converter is going to operate correctly in closed loop. And here we have the final implementation in QSpice. It's very similar to the implementations in previous videos that we have also seen for this converter with digital control. Here we are also adding this reference voltage with a step transient at the reference input to check that the behavior of our converter in closed loop is as expected. So we can take a look at the C++ source and here we have all the variables that we need. These are only for testing purposes so we are not using these two now in the simulation and here we have again all the the code that we need for the simulation that we have used in previous videos so finally the implementation of our compensator is as shown here these are the parameters that we have obtained in the design so now we can compile and run and here we can see the final results at the top we have the PWM signal and this pin here. Here we have the peak voltage which is this output here and it corresponds with the output of the compensator. This output is used of course inside the controller to generate the PWM signal but we are showing this output at this pin to see everything and here in red we have the addition of the current through the inductor plus the ramp as we have also seen in other videos. And below we have the output voltage in green and the sampled output voltage in blue. At this point here we have done a step transient so we can see the transient to check the response of the converter because we have to note that the response that we have calculated is for a small signal transient. So we cannot expect that here at the startup we are going to have the same, exactly the same response. It's going to be similar but not exactly the same. So to check the response we have to do a small signal transient as shown here. And then if we do a zoom here then we can see that we have four samples to get the maximum and we have an overshoot in the design of 30%. So if this is 5 volts, this point here, as we can see here below, is something like 6.3, 6.4, very similar to the value that we want for the response of our converter. Well, this is all today in this presentation. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.